students in this video we are discussing about relative motion first of all you have to understand what is the relative motion is you know most of you aware of that the motion of a body with respect to another body is said to be the relative motion okay relative motion can be understood in three different ways one is very relative to their positions the second is relative with respect to their velocities and third one relative with respect to their accelerations i mean relative motion can be understandable by three different ways with respect to their relative positions by choosing the position vectors the second one relative velocity and third is the relative acceleration to understand this topic in right way first we have to know what is the frame of reference in previous topics i explained you we have different kinds of frames of references such one frame of references ground frame of reference i said okay here i already told you we are discussing about relative motion okay to understand this in right way first uh, locate a coordinate axis system okay we have as usual it is x axis and it is the y axis say it is origin and say it is ground frame it is the ground frame it means what we are observing the position of the body what is it with respect to this ground now think an aeroplane is flying here i'm calling aeroplane it is a isn't it and a balloon is here okay for balloon we call it as b okay students here there is a probability of observing the aeroplane in two different ways getting me here with respect to the balloon with respect to the ground okay students right now what i am doing i am connecting a and b with a position vector okay i am writing it as r bar of ab okay students here the motion of the aeroplane has been observed by the balloon the person in the balloon that means what the position vector we took in the same way i am connecting a to ground okay it is the balloon which is observed by the observer at ground frame and shown with a vector okay i'm writing it as r bar b of g here 
or B, J, with respect to the ground. The position of the B with respect to the ground. Our observer you can say. The two have been added. Then what I am doing? I am connecting Okay. A and as well as the observer or the ground. You can write it as R position vector I am taking of A with respect to the ground. I hope you are understanding. What I am doing now? Just I located the position vectors. Okay, I took a frame. I said it is the ground frame. Here, particle A is here and a body B is there. Here, to understand easily, I said it is the aeroplane, it is the balloon, it is the ground. Here, the position of the aeroplane with respect to balloon is taken as position vector A of B. Similarly, the position of the balloon are the body you can say with respect to ground is shown as R of B of ground and here the position of the aeroplane with respect to the ground frame is written as R bar H okay if you watch it carefully you will find we formed a triangle see this now recall the basic addition in uh, vectors we have a to add the two vectors and you know that it is the triangular law vector addition the law can be stated like this if the two vectors are shown as the two sides of a triangle in a order the closing side of the triangle is the sum of the two other vectors in opposite order. Okay, students. Here it can be stated like this. Two vectors, that is here I am showing, it is RB of ground and RAB. These two position vectors are shown as the two sides of the triangle in a order. If you watch it carefully, the order is what? It is the clockwise direction. Okay, the closing side of the triangle is taken by the other vector which is in opposite direction. Okay, if these two are in clockwise direction, the resultant might be in anti clockwise direction. Okay, students, understanding me? Here I am writing the notation, I am adding actually. Here, relative motion is nothing but the vector addition. Okay. Here, R bar of B with respect to ground. The other side plus R bar of AB. Okay. Might be equal to R bar of A of G. Or it can be written as R bar of AB relative velocity of A with respect to B or relative position of A with respect to B. Here we are talking the positions only is equal to R bar A of G minus R bar B of G. Getting me? Here we can find the position vectors in such way. Here we took the <coughs> ground frame as the reference. That's why I am just uh, what ignoring the G ground. Then you can write it as R bar A B might be equal to R bar A minus R bar B. Okay, students. It doesn't mean that there is no was that presence of the G there. G is invisibly there 
it is showing that position of the A with respect to ground, position of the B with respect to the ground, but here R bar AB is equal to relative position of the A with respect to B. In this way, you can write the vector. It is nothing but the vector. Subtraction. You can understand it very easily. R A A B followed by B. Here, in this way, you can find out the relative positions. But I told you, we have to find out relative velocity and as well as the acceleration. Recall back your memories. By taking this position vectors, okay, if you remember the differentiation, you can get the velocity and as well as the acceleration. Okay. Here, to get the relative velocity, what you have to do? We have to differentiate it. Say this. One. Okay, students. Getting me? Okay, differentiating. Equation. 1 with respect to time what we get dy dt of r bar ab is equal to dy dt of r bar a plus d by dt of r bar b you know that rate of position is velocity you can write v bar a b is equal to here minus ok v bar b it is the desired equation Okay. In the same way, again differentiating with respect to time, okay, that is d by dtf. V bar AB is equal to D by DTF V bar A minus D by DTF V bar B. Okay, rate of velocity is acceleration. We can write AB is equal to A B. In this way, you can find out the relative velocity or relative position or the relative acceleration in one dimension. What I have to do? say here actually it is incomplete without writing relative motion in one dimension. Okay, students. Okay, students, I hope you understood how to find out relative acceleration, relative velocity and relative position, okay, in terms of relative motion in one dimension. I hope you carried the class. In next video, we are going to learn about relative motion in two dimensions. Thank you for watching my video. If you feel it is deserved, subscribe my channel.